Hi, my name is Dante Gagne, and I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio team. In this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the new tools of Visual Studio to help you explore your app's visuals, diagnose problems, and get them fixed. When the .NET framework introduced WPF back in 2006, it spoke loudly of the separation between implementation and presentation. Since then, folks have been using Windows for Windows and Windows Phone apps, but sometimes the designer in Visual Studio isn't quite enough. Our customers have been asking for tools inside Visual Studio to let them explore their app while it's running to really find the issues that only show up when everything is put together. With Windows 10 and the Windows Universal App Platform on the horizon, working with LiveXAML is absolutely critical. Visual Studio 2015 introduces the UI debugging tools for XAML. The first of these tools are the Live Visual Tree and the Live Property Explorer. These tools support apps written against the Windows Universal App Platform but also support desktop applications written in WPF. What makes them powerful is their ability to inspect and modify a running app instead of all the individual pieces. But enough talking about them, let's see how they work. I've got Visual Studio 2015 open and I've got an app I've been working on that targets the Windows Universal App Platform. Before I start working with the UI debugging tools, I better make sure they're enabled. They are by default, but you know, it's worth checking anyway. I'm gonna go up to Tools Options, And under Debugging General, down by the bottom, you're going to see Enable UI Debugging Tools for XAML. So if that's off, you want to make sure you check it on so that the UI Debugging Tools are available. I'm going to press OK, and I'm just going to start a local machine debug session here. You can use the UI Debugging Tools on apps deployed to your local machine or to an independent device. It works in the same way. So we'll start by taking a look at the live visual tree. Let me jump back over here to Visual Studio. And what you're going to see is that the live visual tree is showing you the full view of all of the visuals in your app. It actually goes all the way back to the root scroll viewer, which is generated by Windows when your application starts, as well as the content presenter, the border, all of the things that Windows puts in place whenever you're going to run an app. In fact, the layout root for my app is all the way down here, this music view page. Now, as you're looking at the visual tree, one thing that'll probably jump out are these numbers over to the right. These numbers indicate how many descendants a given element has. You can use this very easily to identify problem areas where you're creating too many visuals, which can lead to performance issues. You'll also see these little icons, which indicate that we have source information for this particular element. What I can do is change my selection in the live visual tree and you'll see that at the coding service, it immediately jumps to that location in my code. Now, if you don't like that functionality, you can move up here and turn that functionality off. And now when I change selection, nothing will move on the code surface. If I still wanna do a one-off, I can turn it back on or I can just right click and choose view source. Now the live visual tree enables me to select elements looking at things from the perspective of the entire tree. What if I know the element, but I don't know exactly where it lives in the tree? Well, that's easy enough to do. I'm going to move up here to the top and choose the Enable Selection. When I turn this on, I'm going to bring my application forward again. And let me move it over a little bit so you can see what's happening. But now there's a red dotted outline that's showing up as I move my mouse over various items. By turning on the in-app selection in the live visual tree, all of the mouse events are now being intercepted by the UI debugging tools to allow me to pick which element I want to edit. So in this case, let's say I want to edit this text box, I can click on it, and now it goes into my live visual tree and selects that text box for me. Now it's kind of hard to see with Visual Studio in the back, so let me move a couple windows around really quick. There, that's a little better. Now that we've taken a look at the Live Visual Tree, let's take a look at the second tool, the Live Property Explorer. I happen to have a text box selected. The first thing you're going to notice is that the properties are broken up into separate scopes. The very top one is showing me all of the properties that are set on this element locally. For this element, the only property that's set locally is the text. If I move down a little bit, you'll see that a style is being applied to this element and it is a text block style. Now over here on the right, you'll see hyperlinks. So if I want to jump to this in my source, I can just click it and jump immediately to it. 
Normally, when you're setting properties, you usually are setting them locally when you're working directly in XAML, but here, the Live Property Explorer can actually show you all of the different locations where a given property can come from. In fact, let's look at font size. I'm going to go to my search and type font size. What it's doing now is showing me all of the different places where the font size is set. It's being set in the style that I'm applying to the value of 12, which is overriding the default value, which is being set by generic.xaml and the metadata, to 11. So if I were, for instance, to clear the font size out here, you'd see that the default setting would take over. Now, I'm not going to do that right now, but I am going to go ahead and make a change. I'm going to clear that search, and you know, the text here says Venus. I'm going to change this to Moon. As soon as I press Enter, you'll see that the change happens immediately in the running application. This is what I was talking about, where the Live Visual Tree and Live Property Explorer can actually interact directly with the running app. If you don't believe what I'm saying, let me take it one step further. This particular style is applied to all of those little labels in my running app. So as you would expect, when I expand the foreground here and change the color, I'm not changing that color on the local object, I'm changing that color in the style. So as soon as I make that change, all the places where that style is being used automatically update. This is what we're talking about when I'm discussing the idea of being able to modify things in the running app with all the pieces coming together. Now you can make these changes, see what impact those changes are going to have on your running app, and get your feedback in real time. The fact that I can jump to the location where this particular change should be made also helps me actually do the final changes. I'm going to maximize Visual Studio again. And by clicking on this hyperlink, this jumps to the location in the code where those properties are coming from. So if I want to persist this change, all I would have to do is modify the string on this line, which is where the foreground is coming from. Unfortunately, today we can't let you make those changes while the app is running, but we can at least get you to the right place so that once you come out of debug mode, you can make these changes and submit. Now this is just a really brief overview of how the Live Visual Tree and the Live Property Explorer play together, but this should give you an idea of just how all these pieces come together to allow you to poke at the individual values in your Live Visual Tree, modify individual properties, see what those changes of the properties are going to do on a global scale, and help you find and fix those UI debugging issues much more quickly. The Live Visual Tree and Live Property Explorer are the first of the UI debugging tools for XAML, but we've got much more we want to do. We hope you give these new tools a try, and we're eager to hear your feedback, either good or bad. More information on these tools, as well as announcements for more tools in the future, can be found on MSDN or on the Visual Studio blog. Thanks for your time, and from here, it's all up to you.